Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is out, and this set is going to have some exciting new signature spells for Oathbreaker. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the new sorceries and see, will it signature spell? Why don't you come along and join me? So we're going to start right off hot and fresh with our tastiest new spells that we might want to use as signature spells in the Oathbreaker format. First off, we're going to talk about Reality Anchor. I think this spell is excellent for a combo artifact deck where you're looking for the exact artifact you need to cause some trouble. This is very similar to spells like Shape Anew or Reshape if you're looking for another spell to compare to. At a 4 mana cost, it's not as good as Shape Anew, but it'll do the job and it's pretty interesting since it is focused within the set. Next up we have Banishing Slash for 2 white. It's a destroy spell. Easy, short, you know, it hits a couple different types of permanents. I don't like the additional requirements, the additional hoops we have to jump through to get that samurai token. Um, I don't feel like removal of this nature makes great signature spells because at two mana, it's not a bad cost. When you have to pay that commander tax at four mana, it loses its value very, very quickly. So I would be hesitant to make this spell a signature spell. Brilliant Restoration I think could be an awful lot of fun as a signature spell in the right white, white green enchantment deck, uh, bant enchantments even with Estrid as your planeswalker. It is a rescue card to get all your stuff from the graveyard back on the battlefield and if you have a lot of enchantments and artifacts that have entered the battlefield effects or that would combo together this could create some insane shenanigans so the only thing that really causes me to not want to choose this as a signature spell is that seven mana cost and it is very restrictive with four white mana pips so I would say this is about you know a six you know it's is not failing but it's not super passing either Commune with the Spirits for one green is value. It lets you, you know, dig a little bit deeper into your deck and try to find either a land card or enchantment you need. Uh, the reason I think this could be an excellent budget signature spell for land decks is because it just gets you a land card. It doesn't say basic. That small distinction can mean the world if you're digging for a particular combo land or if you're uh, using your lands as a toolbox in a deck. So I'd say this one is actually not bad in the right deck. Now, a Ganjo Uprising, you know, uh, it's interesting as an X red white spell. Honestly, red and white are not known for ramping in commander and in a much faster format like Oathbreaker. I would say the outlook of being able to ramp into this fast is a little bit worse. We have been given a lot of treasure support. The downside to this is you are making X-2-2 two, two creatures, but you're also making X-2-2 two, two creatures for all of your opponents. So unless you have an immediate use for those, they're going to allow you to combo or close out the game. I don't really think this is a great choice for a signature spell. Um, you know, and I don't know really what else to say about it. It's just not a card that very much excites me since most samurais seem to want to attack alone. And this spell gives you an army of them. Explosive Entry I think is interesting, but it is obviously a hate card for artifacts. Putting 1-1 counters on creatures is cool. It says one target creature. It doesn't say who controls it, so I guess there could be a little bit of a politics angle there I haven't fully formulated. But again, it's one of those spells that as a single target removal, at a cost of one in a red, it's good, but you're not gonna wanna keep playing it because that commander tax is going to add up and punish you. So I don't think it's great. Explosive Synergy, I actually have to admit to loving, but I do think it is a niche jank card. I'm playing it as a signature spell in an artifact deck I just put together that is heavy on vehicles and equipment. However, if you can't create the token creatures necessary, or just get it, ha continue to keep enough bodies on the field to keep it cheap and guarantee that you can continue to get creatures. This card doesn't actually go as far as I wish because you get to turn four. Let's say you've played a creature every single turn and maybe 
and you've almost got the whole spell paid because you can tap all your land for the four mana you can tap your four creatures that'll get you to eight so you're, you're two red short it is not impossible in a game to get to 10 mana when you can pay you know eight of that by tapping creatures <laughs> you know pretty quickly so this is um you know basically discount convoke on the spell now once you do get enough you know creatures and lands set up to cast this once it's not hard to cast it again that two mana is not as big of a barrier because if i play one land on my turn and i play one creature i've already covered and recouped that two mana because i can tap the new creature and i can tap the land the following turn so because it continues to be discounted by every additional creature we play this isn't as bad as it maybe additionally looks and 10 damage is huge now, if you're getting any value out of this, I'd just like to take a second to remember to, you know, like, share, and subscribe the video. It helps spread this content to more people and helps me grow the Oathbreaker format and community. Fade into Antiquity for two and a green is Exile Tart Artifact or Enchantment. Exile effects are amazing in Commander, I would say. In Oathbreaker, exiling an artifact or enchantment isn't quite as good because none of our commanders are ever going to be enchantments or artifacts because they're all planeswalkers so this again it's single target removal that tax is going to make it hard to play i don't think it's great will farewell signature spell yes it will for four and two white being able to create a one-sided board wipe that only affects the permanents who you don't care about but you still want gone is very good and six mana four board wipe is worth it i can't really say anything more about it i really love this card i like the alternative art for it way more imperial oath um just nope just nope six mana for three two two white samurai creature tokens with vigilance and scry three the it's it is six power spread out over three bodies for six mana so i guess the rate is okay the vigilance is a little bit of a bit added bonus and the sky scry three is going to help you set your deck i just don't know in what world i'm going to be creating a deck that cares enough about this card that it would be a good signature spell and not just within the 60. now correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but that's just my point of view on it right now invoke despair i love all the invoked cards but what i need to say up front on all of them because they all kind of fall in the same blanket is i probably wouldn't run them as a signature spell unless you're in a mono colored deck the four pips is restrictive Oathbreaker games are shorter than Commander, so the odds you're going to get all the right color mana you need is harder unless you want to spend a significant amount on your mana base. Having said that, you know, target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life and you draw a card, and you repeat this process for an enchantment in Planeswalker. This is destroying three permanents at its maximum, and any player who can't sacrifice those permanents is going to lose up to six life and you're going to draw three cards so if you're running a deck that is mostly kind of and this is rude and mean but like board wire board wipe tribal or you're thinking of you know having tigrid in your deck forcing your opponent to sacrifice all those permanents and when they can't you're going to get additional value is good so this card is good in the decks that want it five mana is not a bad cost to pay for that i would actually expect it to be six or higher in most cases and you know you can really control when you use it you know um wish it was instant speed but there you have it invoke justice you turn target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield and then you can put four woman counters among any number of creatures or vehicles target player controls this is interesting again the being able to put those one wing counters anywhere on the board could be a political thing that could help you stay in the game or could help you king make Returning a permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield could be a huge power play that gets you back into a game you're behind on or gets you a combo piece. I think it's not as good as the black one, but honestly, it's only as good as the permanent you're getting back. So in a deck where you are milling yourself and you plan on doing a lot of recursion, this is probably a better card. 
the value of this card is directly going to be influenced by what you are pulling out of your graveyard. So just keep that in mind. Invoke the Ancients. It's going to give us two big beefy boys. Throw them right on the battlefield and we, we get to choose whether they have Vigilance, Trample, or Reach. So this can help make us the right type of blocker or attacker depending on where we are in the game. Not bad at five mana. Not sure I want to pay seven or you know nine for it however green is one of those colors where if you ramp this is one of those invokes that you probably always hit the the four green pips on even if you're in a green and something else stack as probably one of those cards that you are going to maybe want to play over and over because you can always use extra bodies you know so it's a little bit more replayable than some of the other invoke cards invoke the winds you gain control of target artifact or a creature and you untap it that is a permanent effect again really depends on what you're trying to steal i feel like this could either be the biggest blowout i win the game card or the worst it really depends on what you're taking if you're stealing a platinum imperium or a <clears throat> or a blight steel colossus it's a lot better but if otherwise it's just going to kind of sit in your command zone and not do much so if you don't really build around your commander or command zone or you just want to do a I steal all my opponent's stuff tribal might be okay in that deck but I wouldn't rank it high Kaito's Pursuit target player discards two cards ninjas and rogues you control gain menace till end of turn are you building a ninjas and rogues deck or one or the other then yes I think this is probably a decent card to run because it's going to control hand sizes I feel like it is more situated for a one-on-one -on -one game. So if you're playing at a full pot of four, this card is worse. You know, and again, it's single target in that it's single target player, you know, hand removal, and it's gonna get more expensive. So your mileage may vary, but I actually don't think it's a great signature spell. Lucky offering, destroy target artifact, mana value three or less, you gain three life. In a life gain deck, it could be good. Um, I feel like you want to run this in a deck where you know you're going to be able to create a treasure so that you can kind of combo off and make sure you're always getting something. So even if your opponents end up not playing artifacts or something, you still have an answer. Again, I'm willing to pay one mana for this. I'm probably willing to pay three mana for this, but it's always important to keep in mind the commander cost because it's going to make some of these spells unplayable very quick and they have to have a lot of utility if you plan on playing them more than once and since this only hits one type of permanent and it's out of restricted mana value i don't know that you want to depend too heavily on lucky offering as a signature spell malicious malfunction i mean it's a mini board wipe it's going to be good against early turns against token decks before they get their anthems and stuff online I like that it permanently exiles the creatures it's killing. That can actually decimate um, a small creature deck like a white weenie deck or anything that wants to move fast and low to the ground. I would probably pay all the way up to six mana for that effect to use it a couple times. I would never want to be in a situation where I have to cast the spell three times to remove one six six creature, but that is an option. I wish it had a little bit more utility, but that's really all I can say about that. Okiba Salvage, return to our creature or vehicle from our graveyard to the battlefield, put two 1-1 one -one counters on it if we control an artifact and an enchantment. If we control an artifact and an enchantment, I see not as a bonus but a downside. Four and a black mana to return any permanent from our graveyard to the battlefield is actually a pretty good rate. But there are other cards that already exist in Magic's history that do this. So say in a deck where you're focused on artifacts and enchantments in black, it's good, but outside of that niche case, I don't know that it's a good signature spell. I probably wouldn't run it. Reckoner Shakedown. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. That's important. If you do, that player discards that card, and if you don't, you put two 1-1 counters on a creature or vehicle you control. So this is a pump spell for three mana, and it can make an opponent discard anything but lands. It might not sound like a lot, but a lot of cards are more restrictive than that now. They'll say non-land, non-creature spell. Being able to hit a creature, planeswalker, enchantment, or artifact with this card 
makes it a good card and because you get to choose, I feel like it's better than the other discard card I mentioned earlier in the video. I would probably run this. And because it does give you a option to not make them discard, you can know what an opponent's holding and pump your creature instead and not put a player behind. So you do have a little bit of, you know, if you don't attack me, I won't make you discard that card politics action going on here. Soul Transfer, mm, this is pretty good. I think if you can exile a creature or Planeswalker for three mana, that's about a rate I expect. I think if you can return to our creature or Planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand, that's a great way to get your Planeswalker back at least once without having to pay the tax. So it's a nice little niche case there. Actually, you wouldn't be able to do that, would you? If this was in your um, command zone and you put your Planeswalker in your graveyard, your Planeswalker is not on the battlefield. So you actually can't use this card to get your own Planeswalker back if it's your signature spell. So that is too bad that that doesn't work the way I was hoping. And the fact that you could choose to do both if you control an artifact and enchantment is interesting. I would prefer if it said something like, if you control your commander, you can choose both. But for a main set Kamigawa card, that makes sense. And finally, the last sorcery in the set that could maybe be a signature spell is Spinning Wheel Kick for X, X, and two green. Target creature you control is gonna deal damage equal to its power to X target creatures or planeswalkers. I like this. I don't like it with commander text, but you've heard me say that a lot through the course of this video. But even if you pay um, two and two green, this is a spell that's gonna let one of your creatures potentially kill a problematic planeswalker or knock it back down from ultimate without having to worry about getting combat through blockers. Being able to pay, what, two, four, five, six, being able to pay six mana might let you knock two opponent's planeswalkers down if you can pay, what, three, six, seven, eight mana, you can knock all of your opponent's Planeswalkers down low. Also using this as a mini board wipe to maybe remove smaller creatures could be useful too. Um, it's gonna get, I think, too expensive. So you do wanna be in a deck that is heavy in on ramp if you're gonna choose this as a signature spell. And it's also gotta be a deck that makes big creatures. So there is a niche there for it, but it's not like an all purpose signature spell. So, and there we go. So now that was all of the sorceries out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and I went through and I kind of quick rated them for whether or not they would make good signature spells for your Oathbreaker decks. Um, I wanna thank y'all for stopping by. If you've enjoyed the video, please remember to uh, you know like, share, and subscribe. My subscribers for YouTube are down here below. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon and support the nonsense I do, please stop on by and I'll put a video up right, whoop right here haha -ha, i can point to the right side of the screen um and it will uh be something related in fact it might be another video just like this one about all of the instants in kamigawa neon dynasty that i think might make a good signature spell for your oathbreaker deck i'm also going to do a brief video spotlight on how i feel i would build around each commander so please check that out and i hope you have a great rest of your day